Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Don Gulling, CEO of Vertex Consulting. Thank you for registering and attending. We appreciate you joining us today. Uh, our content this afternoon is going to focus on Mitel Connect Director Admin Training. Uh, I've got an agenda that's focused heavily on things that we get requested to do during the holidays. Uh, so very timely content. I know that a lot of people don't want to think about the holidays just yet because of kind of all we're going through. But uh, these things are going to come whether we like it or not, right? So here they come. Um, before we get started, I want to talk a couple of minutes just about some things we've got going on, things I've been asked about by a lot of customers, especially lately. Um, I've had a lot of questions about the new phones. So Mitel, you know, Shortel is now Mitel. Mitel Connect is the new operating system. And in Mitel Connect, there are options for new handsets. You don't have to buy new phones. <clears throat> you know, 100% of the phones that we sold still work on Mitel Connect. However, a lot of people have got phone systems that are, you know, 8, 9, 10 years old. Handset refreshment or replacement is nice, gets you a lot of bang for the buck. They're affordable. Um, this is the array of the new phones. Just remember to be on these new phones, you have to be on Connect. It won't work on, they won't work on 14.2. Personally, I'm using uh, one of these phones. Today, I'll show you which one here. I'm using uh, this one at the end here. This one here, second from the end, is probably our most popular. The screen is a little bit smaller. Um, frankly, I feel like I like this one more because I like these hard buttons here. I just am used to, I'm just more accustomed to that. This one's a touch screen and it's cool. Um, yeah, I don't know that it's worth the extra money and it's pretty large. So if I had to do over again, I probably would have done this one. I do have this headset plugin, which I love. Now this is a, a headset plugin that goes right on the side of the phone. It's powered by the phone with power pass through. So that's convenient. And uh, integrated hook flash and off hook answer. Very nice. However, my favorite thing of all is if you look at these handsets, there's no cord, right? Cords here, no cords here. On these phones, you can have a, a Bluetooth cordless handset option, rechargeable battery. Um, it works probably 30 feet from the desk or so. And just a, a minor improvement, but a life-changing one, nevertheless, because my cord would get so tangled up on my desk and so bent out of shape. And I tried cord detanglers and every other thing. And honestly, I didn't like the way it looked. It was kind of messy and you get stretched out. And uh, you don't realize you want to be five feet away from the phone instead of three feet away from the phone. So massive difference if you can get one. That's the biggest That's the biggest sea change is the cordless handset. So I highly recommend you consider that. Love this headset. Also really love this Bluetooth speakerphone, which will work with any of these. I love the Bluetooth speakerphone. It worked great too. So if you're interested, let us know. Not a sales pitch, but a lot of people wanted to see a picture. That's what they look like. A lot of great stuff out there. This just talks about the accessories in a little more detail. Um, obviously, the programmable key module, which is like a keypad that sits on the side, gets you, you know, uh, 28 keys in three pages, so 84 buttons, kind of a receptionist keyboard. But they did it a little bit nicer this time around. If you remember the older one, it was kind of kludgy. This one really has good fit and finish. Snaps in, like locks in place. It's powered by the phone. You know, it, it's a, the exact same layout and profile as uh, of the phone, so it doesn't look wonky. It's a nice one. So uh, that's popular. And then um, something kind of out of the box but works good is this WLAN adapter. So if you've got people working from home, because of COVID or whatever, and they're on Wi-Fi, honestly, you know, trying to get somebody to plug in a phone to uh, a hard jack, uh, Ethernet jack in their house, they might not even have an Ethernet jack. They're gonna go find the cable modem. So what this WLAN adapter lets you do is plug your Mitel phone in the WLAN adapter. The WLAN adapter connects to their Wi-Fi network. So now you've essentially got a Mitel phone without having to have a patch cable to the router or trying to find that in your house or wherever you're at. So. WLAN adapter also very popular because of all the people working remote. Keep that in mind. Let us know if we can help you with that. Glad to go into more detail with you at another time. I want to kind of talk about auto attendance. That's something that's a big topic of discussion among our clients and internally during this kind of season. Uh, it's November 17th. Thanksgiving is right around the corner. 
Uh, a lot of businesses are definitely going to be closed on Thursday. I mean, the vast majority of our clients will be closed on Thursday. And a significant number will be closed on Friday as well. I don't know if it's 50-50, but I'd say a big chunk are going to be closed on Friday. So uh, what do you do? Well, you're going to need to look at your holiday schedule. You're going to need to look at your auto attendance and look at how you're covering for that so that callers are aware of what their options are. When they call you, you may need to have different uh, auto attendant prompts. You may need to adjust your schedules, you know, you name it. So we want to talk about all those things. Uh, as all of us here probably know already, auto attendants are used for all kinds of purposes. One, uh, answering your main number. So someone calls in, that might be the first place they go today as an auto attendant. Thanks for calling Vertex Consulting, choose from these five options, that kind of thing. But auto attendants are also used for other purposes. Uh, the second thing they're used for, you can use it for routing calls to work groups like sales support and so on. Uh, what I mean by that is maybe you have a nested auto attendant or a tiered auto attendant. They dial in, hey, thank you for calling Vertex Consulting. Uh, please use the following five options. You know, to reach our sales department, press one. They press one. They get the sales auto attendant. You don't hear. Here you get a person. But other places, maybe they have a sales auto attendant that says, you know, for an inquiry about an existing uh, quote, press one. To get a quote for a new solution, press two. To talk to a MyTel specialist, press three, et cetera. You get the point. That's also an auto attendant. Uh, another thing we see is automated information auto attendants. Uh, basically, auto attendants that are used to give pre recorded information to callers about directions to your facility or information for their first visit. Let's say it's a medical facility. Hey, uh, to, to get more information about your first visit to our practice, press five, five. You know, on your first visit to our practice, please be prepared to provide, you know, a photo identification physical insurance card, you know, et cetera. So that's uh, automated directions or automated information auto attendant. And then also uh, external users dialing in and getting into voicemail, kind of a back door, back window auto attendant. That's another way of doing it. Let me talk about some other ones. Uh, these are ones that we've seen used uh, in a lot of our clients throughout the years. The first one potentially uh, is a group of things for internal purposes, let's say. So during pandemic times, everybody is kind of, I think, settled in a little bit to this new work modality and sort of getting accustomed to the way things go. But uh, we're all, you know, keeping our eye towards a change coming. You don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to come, I'm sure. Let's be ready for it. Maybe you set up an auto attendant for an update to your team, a daily or a weekly update. Uh, you can configure that auto attendant to be recorded remotely. So somebody could dial in and record it from home or a cell phone. An executive or HR manager or president or CEO can do it. And that allows them to then tell your team, hey, for the latest update, you know, dial this number, send out a mass email. And they can hear a voice. I know everybody's uh, uh, sending a lot of emails and text messages these days. They're very effective. Sometimes, you know, the human voice can add a layer of comfort or clarity or nuance that the actual written words can't. I know you've all been in the same spot I've been where you write an email, you think it's thoughtfully written and clear and polite, but the receiver gets it and the way they read it is the opposite. And maybe they feel like it's, you know, terse or brief or, you know, uh, hostile when it, that's not the intention at all because the tone isn't there. That's what the human voice can do for you. So maybe you want a tone and that's why you would use it. Uh, next one, you can also have potentially a uh, auto tender for a calling out, call out sick or to touch base. The idea being um, if you've got people that are um, maybe at home, either working from home or ill with COVID, we have, you know, some folks that work from home. We actually have one of our coworkers, Robert, our new client success manager is home ill. Him and his wife both have COVID, unfortunately. Uh, feeling better, but he's going to be down for quite a while. Um, he can call in an auto attendant leave us a message, but instead of a voicemail, it can be checked by multiple people. We can hear his voice. He can hear from us. So all kinds of neat ways to do that. Lastly on here, you can also set up potentially an auto attendant for frequently asked questions. Um, an example, a lot of folks are going through insurance renewal right now. Their health insurance, our starts in January 1, right? We're in a, um, we use paychecks as our payroll provider. We're in a PEO, which is like a, a managed 
payroll solution, and they handle our benefits, our 401k, all of that for us. And we've got our renewal prices. We go back to the team and say, hey, open renewal here. We got to get our stuff submitted. And we give them, you know, we had a meeting, we do all that, but maybe we have some follow-up questions. So we take the frequently asked questions. Instead of just putting it in an email, maybe you want to do an auto attendant, give them some options. So you could do that as well. So all that's uh, available to you. And those are all kinds of things you can use auto attendants for. A couple things, and we're going to do some of those in just a second. So a couple things to keep in mind when you're doing these auto attendants. Uh, be careful that you don't go into too many layers. Um, I'd say two layers deep, like a primary auto tenant and one below it, you know, that's very acceptable. A lot of people use that. I think three levels is pushing it. Trust me, we've got some customers that go deeper than that. And we always kind of strongly urge people to streamline it so they can fit it all on one menu if possible, but definitely no more than two. Once you get to three levels, people get frustrated. That's just our experience. Additionally, we recommend ideally that you always provide a zero out, you know, to get out of there if you have the ability to, to get to a live person. Now, I know that in some organizations, you, you can't let them do that. You don't want them to zero out because then that's all they'll ever do. They won't use the right options and it'll kind of break down your call routing system. So I say that with a grain of salt, knowing it won't apply to everybody. But if your business is or your organization is such that you can do that, afford to do that, or capable of that, I highly recommend that. Next, always provide an option to return to the previous menu. I've seen this where people have an option to return to the previous menu and they don't announce it, meaning they don't say it. And so folks don't know they can back up by pressing the star key. So that goes into writing your prompts and making sure your prompts are well written so that it clearly states to them hey, to go to the previous menu, press the star key. Uh, that way they can kind of back up. Hey, I went to sales, well, I meant to go to engineering, kind of do that. And then uh, lastly, unlike me, who I ramble a lot, keep your prompts short, quick, and efficient. I love to write out prompts and then look at my letter count and word count and kind of gamify in my mind, shrinking it down to say the same thing with fewer words. Um, great movie called A River Runs Through It and uh, in that movie the dad has his son write an essay the son brings it in, the dad reads it, great gives it back to him, he's like half as long <laughs> the son goes back and brings him an essay he's like great, half as long third time he comes back, he's like okay go out and play, I just love that scene so I'm always thinking that, right half as long so remember that users can record auto attendant prompts from their own telephone they don't have to go to director. They don't have to have director access. You can also record it from an outside phone if you enable that feature, right? So you can delegate recording of them to an a employee who knows how to do it from their home or wherever they're at. And as a final option here, you can get professional voice talent to record prompts for you, and they'll do it in a professional voice that's, you know, a beautiful voice clear, great enunciation, awesome clarity. Um, not a lot of folks are choosing that option these days. I think people are fine with kind of do-it-yourself DIY mentality. And I'm always, uh, always gives me a smile when I call a client and I hear, you know, Brian or Steve's or Mike's voice on the auto attendant, right? It's, uh, that's always pleasing to me. But if you do want to record it with a third party, we recommend, highly recommend Worldly Voices. That's our go-to. Um, people have asked me in the past for options. You know, can you give me some names of some people who do this? I just give that one. That's the only one I ever give. I don't even want to get any, we don't get any money from them. They don't pay us. So there's no commission. It's just the quality of the work and the price is fantastic. I mean, it's just a great price and a great result and professional, timely. They can turn around recordings if it's a rush in a, a single day potentially, their standard production time is only about three days. So, and it's affordable. So we always use worldly voices and that's who we recommend. You can go to them directly. You don't have to come through us. If you want to say we referred you, great. Just so they know we're still out here recommending them. But if you don't, that's fine too. So let's dive into it. Let's look at some, uh, oh, actually, uh, 
false pause here. I just want to take one second, not kill you with this, but I do want to let you know that Vertex Consulting uh, for the third year in a row, we are conducting our Joy for All gift drive. This is a gift drive for teens and young adults that are in foster care in Marion County and in our surrounding area. Uh, Kid Central is one of our clients. They manage uh, foster care placements. There are over a thousand teens and young adults in foster care in our community. These are kids without a mom and dad in the house. who are placed with foster parents who are great people and frequently have meager incomes and they're doing their best, probably have kids of their own. And a lot of these foster kids uh, at Christmas time don't have a lot of Christmas cheer. Um, when we talk to these kids about what they want for Christmas, frequently they're asking for essential items like clothes, shoes, a pair of jeans. They're not asking for Xboxes and Playstations, not expecting that. So everyone loves to give to Toys for Tots, which I love that too. I'm actually doing a Toys for Tot drive myself and I'm a big Toys for Tot fan. But a lot of those toys go to cute, cuddly little kids. Teens, young adults, harder to buy for, you know. So that's why we're focusing on that. If you want to give, we'd love to have your support. Ideal gifts would be to kind of variety stores like Target and Walmart, because again, these kids are probably going to use it to buy, you know, jeans, uh, tennis shoes. You know, in some cases, kids ask for school supplies for Christmas. It was, you know, eye opening. But also things like Dick's Sporting Goods, Best Buy, a Visa card. It's multi purpose, very popular. If you want to give merchandise, we accept that. New and unwrapped sporting equipment, art supplies, jewelry, lotion, uh, body wash sets, earbuds, headphones, things that are geared towards teens and young adults, because that's what we're looking for. If you want to donate by credit card, you can do that. Vertex Consulting is going to take all these donations. We're going to account for every penny of it. We're going to get your receipt from Kids Central. It shows it's a charitable donation from a 501c3 charity. And Vertex is going to pay the merchant fees on the credit card. So if you donate 50 bucks on a credit card, the kids are going to get 50 bucks, not 48 bucks. If you want to donate cash, some people want to write a check for all kinds of reasons, for accounting purposes, make the check out to us. And the reason is because we want to make sure that the check goes to this campaign because Kids Central is a big organization. And if the check goes straight to them, they kind of put it in their general fund, and it may not end up going into the Joy for All gift drive just because, you know, the way accounting works. The total value of donations goes to kids. doesn't go to us. We keep nothing. It's all done. We're doing it all as charity. We're giving ourselves, of course. Kid Central is a 501c3. And we do have a mailing address and a drop-off location if you want and a web form. So uh, sorry to bother you with that, but that's something we're doing this Christmas. We've done every year for the past three years. So feel free to participate if you want. So what I've done here is I've logged into <clears throat> Connect Director. Kind of stealing my own thunder here. Let me back up. So I'm in Mytel's Connect Director. And I'm on the, uh, let's go to the login page. So you first log in, this is what it looks like. You're going to see this dashboard. It's going to show you your system performance over the last hour, day, seven days, whatever you want it to be. We're going to focus right now on auto attendance and schedules. I want to talk about those two things together. So where do you go for that? You go up to this wrench icon, which is administration. If you can't recall that, no problem. Just go to search and type in auto attendant, attendant, and hit that. And it takes you right to your auto attendant menu list. Now, what you're seeing over here is all the auto attendants that we have defined inside the Vertex Connect Director. This VCI main AA, that is our main auto attendant. That's the one we've had kind of forever. Some of these other ones are ones we kind of muck around with for training or testing or other things. This is the one that's used in production day in, day out. Uh, I'm going to maximize the screen here, expand that up so you see it on the whole screen. So this is the extension. It's extension 1400. That's the name, VCI main AA. You can easily change it if you like. No DID configured. The DNS is not configured. We don't need that. We're routing to a different way. Let me jump into this on hours. So remember, when you configure an auto attendant, and you get callers into it, auto attendants have schedules. By default, an auto attendant has an on hours, off hours, 
holiday, and custom option. But each of these is driven by a schedule. So the on hour schedule is driven by this on hour schedule. That's what we named it, on hours. Off hours is driven by anything that's not on hours. That's what it is. You don't need to have a time band to find for off hours. It just knows it's not on hours. Holiday is a specific mode inside the MyTel system for holiday schedules that lets you configure a schedule for a holiday far in advance. I'm going to talk about that in a second. And then also a custom, you can have a custom schedule as well. So start with on hours. For on hours at Vertex, we have an on hours schedule, and you can click it by a link, uh, link it by clicking there. You'll see our on hours schedule right here, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. That's our on hours schedule. If I want to make a change, and I'm going to tell you why, you go right in here and you change it. So you've probably got an on hour schedule set up. It's probably already configured and working. We get a lot of calls the day before Thanksgiving. And people tell us, okay, we want to close at 1 p.m. today on Wednesday so people can go home early. How do we do that? Well, here's how. You go to your Wednesday schedule, and instead of saving 5.30, you drop it down to, oops, sorry, you drop it down to 13.30, and you hit save. What that does is it changes your schedule that one day, this Wednesday, to close you at 1.30. Now, when you get to the, back to work on Monday or Friday, you got to come back here and change it again to what it was before. It doesn't kind of default back. A lot of folks have asked us, when can we have it set so that we can have a holiday schedule, have a half a day on it? Um, I would love for that to happen. You know, I'm right there with you. I've asked for it too. We don't have that. So what we have to do is manually change it like that. So you can do the same thing on Friday. Uh, or whatever day, you can just change the hours and then go back and change them back when you're back in the office. So if you have a half a day, or let's say you want to close on Wednesday for Thanksgiving team lunch, you could you could literally say, I want to make it from 1230 to, you know, 1130. And then it'll click into your after, after hours mode. And then when you're back open, you can change it back again and, and kind of reopen. Obviously, as always, consult with us. We'll be glad to walk you through setting up a custom greeting for all that stuff if you need help with it. But that's how you do it is in the schedules. So I'm going to go back to the auto attendance, go back to the Vertex main auto attendant, and expand this again, and go back to my on hours. In my on hours, here are all of our prompts. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this briefly, and I'm going to throw it into uh, Microsoft Word so it's easier to read because the uh, Font's kind of small on here for my eyes. And I'm going to make this bigger. Um, let's go with. So R says, thank you for calling Vertex Consulting, et cetera. If you notice your party's extension, dial at any time. For sales, press two, support, press three, accounting, press four. Your hard down, press five. Name directory, press nine. That's our main auto attendant. Um, where does it take you? Option two goes to a sales hunt group. It goes to me, Derek, John, Ryan, a bunch of other folks. Option three, which is our support team, goes to a contact a MyTel contact center route point. That's how we send it into our contact center because we're using MyTel ECC. This lets us do that. Accounting goes to an accounting hunt group, which is Tangerine and Cheryl. And then hard down goes again to that in open hours and during hours, hard down goes to the contact center group, right? After hours, <clears throat> different greeting. So just to show what that looks like, after hours we say, next business day, you want to return a message, press two. Lastly, if it's hard down, press three. So after hours here, if they press two, we send it to a general mailbox. So whoever the caller is says, I want to be called back, but not today. Tomorrow is fine. They leave a message for tomorrow. It goes to general mailbox. We check it. We call them back. If it says hard down, meaning I'm in a crisis and I need support now, even if it's 2 in the morning, it goes to a special mailbox. 
called our hard down mailbox. And we have that set up to go to our on-call team of three people to answer calls 24-7 and get back and take care of you after hours. That's a custom function using a, a, a escalation profile. And we also have a, a application we use called PagerDuty. So we're double covered there. So that's how our off hours works. Let me pivot into holiday. So a holiday greeting has a schedule of its own. And in this case, it's the holiday schedule. That's what we call the thing. There's our choices, I call it holidays. Let me jump over to that for you. In the holiday schedule, you'll see here all the holidays we have defined at the bottom, right? So it has this closed on Thanksgiving on 1126, has this closed on Christmas on Friday 1225, has this closed on New Year's Day, which is Wednesday, which that's a weird one, right? Uh, Wednesday for New Year's Day. But that's what it is. Oh, it's the wrong year. That's why. It's 2021. Let me fix that real quick. Should have been the same day as Christmas, right? There you go. Friday. Friday and Friday. Now they're right. So, and then uh, Labor Day was earlier this year. <clears throat> My point is, on these days, all day, from a minute after midnight until midnight, it will go to the holiday schedule, not the on hours, not the custom, not the other. This overrides all those. So, the way this is programmed right now, if I change nothing else on 11:26. It won't go to on hours or off hours. It'll only go to our holiday schedule. That's by design. So for you, for your organization, if you want to do it, remember, you need to have that holiday greeting recorded and ready to go and make sure that it's accurate. We have ours. We use the same one again and again. So we're, I'm, I know we're good to go, but you need to check yours to make sure it's right. If you wanted to be closed a different day, let's say you wanted, I mean, uh, I hate to call it this, but people have this, uh, we kind of have this stuck in our idiom here of a Black Friday, right? The day after Thanksgiving. Uh, used to be biggest shopping day of the year for a, a lot of retail stores. Um, I don't know what's going to happen this year. I guess we'll see. Um, I don't think we're going to have a lot of people out shopping in person in the same kind of crowds we've had in the past, but who knows? Uh, Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, <clears throat> let's say we were closed or not. We would put that in there as 1127, hit save. Now I've got Black Friday in there as a holiday. On that day, it'll play our holiday greeting. So I'm going to take that off because we are not closed on Black Friday. Going back to the auto attendant, Vertex Main AA, expanding that screen again. Go to our holiday greeting. Here's our options for our holiday options. If you press zero, it goes to a a secret hunt group. It's a bunch of phones internally. So just know that if you're on this call, you benefit from that knowledge. If they press two, again, that's the leave a message that we return next business day. Three, it's an emergency. I know it's Thanksgiving Day, but my business is open. I'm seeing patients today. I have to have help. You know, we're going to be there for you. And then nine is a, if you know your party's extension, and then that's a voicemail login. So those are your options. Now, <clears throat> let's say I want to play this thing back. I can listen to the prompt by clicking play. Let me answer it. This is ours. And telephone systems for business and government. Our office is closed in observance of the holiday. If you would like to leave a message to be returned the next business day, please press 2. If your computer network or telephone system is hard down and you need emergency support, please press 3 and you will be routed to our on-call support mailbox. Thank you for calling. To accept this message, press pound. To I'm going to leave that message as is. That was our holiday message, uh, wonderfully recorded by Steve Hall. You might recognize his voice. So that's a generic holiday message. We don't say Christmas or New Year's, so we don't have to keep changing it. Um, there was a time in the Wayback Machine for our customers have been around with us for a while where I would personally record these auto attendants every year, like as a ritual, uh, the week before the holiday, I would think about something funny to say. I don't really have a great sense of humor, but I would try to, and, and record a custom holiday message to try to spread some holiday cheer. But um, 
kind of grew up past that, I guess. And now we have Steve running engineer at Holiday One. So that's what ours sounds like. That's what the holiday message is. And remember, you could play back, record it, you can import a new one, and so on. All that stuff uh, is available to you right there. So that's really holiday messaging. I do want to give the uh, opportunity for anybody that wants to you know, comment on it, please use the Q&A or chat. But that's what we wanted to cover for holiday greetings. We wanted to cover the ability for you to see what does it take to get a holiday greeting, how do you use it, how do you schedule it, and also how do you do a half a day, right? Again, a half a day, you've got to get in that week and change your schedule that week for that half day like on the fly. That's the only way to do it. So that's how you do it by adjusting the schedule. Hopefully that gives you enough ammo <clears throat> on that auto attendant to know how to handle it for the holidays. So let me pivot past that and go on to the next thing. I want to talk about uh, something I've been asked a lot lately, which is how do I as an individual user or my team as individual team members, how do we have holiday coverage on our extensions, on our mailbox, on our voicemail, and so on? So what I want to do is I want to pivot and go into the connect user interface for a minute and talk about that, okay? Minimize all these. Pull over my Mitel Connect client. Looks familiar. So here I am in my Mitel Connect client. <clears throat> because we're in this meeting, I'm going to go ahead and set myself in a in a meeting mode so the phone doesn't ring. And I want to talk about these holiday schedules. So look what's up here. You have uh, all these call modes available in a meeting, out of office, vacation, do not disturb, and custom. These are all customizable. When you customize this uh, label, people internally see it. This is not seen by anybody outside your organization. The way they would see it is if they're using the Connect client and they hover over your name, they see it. So if they go to contacts and you know, you're know you one of their contacts, it'll say, the additional message. So Brittany just says on the phone. If she changed her in a meeting mode, she could say, you know, my tell training, and it would say my tell training right there. You get the idea. Um, I don't have myself as a favorite. I guess I could try to add myself. Never done that before exactly, but let's see what it does. So I have myself here as a Don Going. Go to contacts, scroll down, go to Don Going. Yeah, it can't show my presence because I am me. I guess that's the way that works. I've never tried to do that, so sorry for the epic fail there. Anyway, getting back to users, I'm in holiday mode. What do I want to do? Well, typically what I want to do is I want to set up call routing. So I'm going to pull up the call routing window and remember my options here. I've got call routing for available in a meeting out of office, do not disturb, vacation, and custom. Um, I'll frequently use for a holiday, I'll use the vacation button. So that's what I'll put it down for. Let's say it's for Thanksgiving. I am working next week. I'm basically working almost all week, but I've got family coming to visit with me, uh, my sister, one person, so no COVID impact there. She's healthy, but she's going to come visit, and uh, I am going to take some time off to go pick her up uh, so she can spend some time with us. I'll put a vacation greeting up there to let people know I'm working remote with limited access to email and voicemail, but I will return calls as soon as possible. Our office is closed on Thursday, but emergency support is available and tell them how to get that. So I'll create a custom greeting for myself. And that's what I use, I use Notepad. I have a bunch of them in here. So let me kind of scroll through a couple of them. Like here's one, I, I save all of them, right? Hi, this is Don Gulling, I'm on vacation with my family, blah, blah, blah. I, I'm on family vacation on a cruise ship. You know, that's old one, right? That's not current. <laughs> here's my cell phone greeting and so on. So here's all the ones in a meeting greeting. I, I have them all typed out and I use them again and again and again. But I would do that for Thanksgiving. I would use the vacation mode. Then I would change the greeting. So I would say, go here to record a new greeting. Record that. Use the script for the greeting I want, which is, I'm working for the week of Thanksgiving. However, I'm uh, uh, in meetings and traveling a bit with limited access to voicemail and email. 
for emergency support, press zero. Your call will be routed to my support team. Otherwise, leave me a message. I'll call you back as soon as possible. Our office is closed on Thursday in observance of Thanksgiving. And I'll actually have it recorded just like that. For Christmas, I mean, I'm off on Friday for sure. Uh, probably I'll leave Christmas Eve at lunch. So I will have a greeting saying, hey, I'm out of the office for Christmas vacation on um, Thursday afternoon and all day Friday, returning on Monday. If it's an emergency, press zero. You'll be right to our hard down mailbox, just like that. So those are your options for personal call handling. Last thing I'll say is if, if you're um, in a position in your organization where you know, you're kind of indispensable or you're, in, you're a coverage or you're an escalation point of contact or a manager and you need to be reached by your team, uh, even if it's the holidays for urgent matters that some people are in that situation, you can set something I love to do on this vacation mode, right? And in vacation mode, you can change your, let's go back to the wizard and walk you through it step by step. You can go to, um, one more step here, find me. So you can turn find me on, but find me, you hide the option. So people who don't know you and don't know your role in the organization or, or outside the business, they can't use find me because they don't know it's an option but your internal people will know because they'll get an internal reply with your out of office reply says to reach me immediately, call my desk phone and use the hidden find me option, right? The hidden find me option is they have to know to press one during the greeting, then it will call you. So my suggestion there is if you need to be available and reachable regardless of status, you can use find me settings, make it a hidden option and notify your team they just had to press one. Additionally, you could screen it by having them prompt to record their name as well. So when someone calls you, they're going to hear uh, uh, they're going to hear your greeting. They're going to press one. They're going to have to record their name. So when you get the call, you'll know, hey, this is a call from Don or whoever, and you can answer it. So my tip for holiday coverage here is, uh, if you want to have people be able to reach you but only if it's very warranted and you want to make it easy for them without calling your cell or texting you, you could have it on your desk phone, set it up as find me. Don't announce it to the public, but you know, your colleagues will know and then use the prompt to record their name. So it screens them. So that's my option for kind of personal holiday call recording. We're going to stick around a bit and we're going to uh, monitor the Q and a, and the chats field as well. But that's really what I want to convey today. I want to talk uh, mostly about holiday greetings, auto attendance schedules, call coverage, uh, things like that. Because frankly, from now until next Thursday, that'll be a lot of the calls that we'll get to the help desk about how to change those greetings. And we're glad to do it for you. But if you want to do it yourself, I wanted to enable you to. And then the same goes for uh, Christmas break. If you're taking the Christmas break, we want to make sure you're equipped for that as well. So that concludes the program content, but I will stay available for any kind of live ad hoc. Glad to uh, go into anything specific you've got. Just post it in either the chat or the Q&A window. Otherwise, we will see you for our December training. You can uh, see that post on our website. And if you're interested in the Joy for All gift drive, you, know, you can contact me or Brittany. Uh, no pressure, uh, but if you want to participate, you know, glad to have you join us. And I hope you all have a great, safe, healthy, and happy holiday season. Thanks for joining. Thanks for your support, and we'll see you soon.